Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an absolutely insane improvement to Yuzu, an emulator for the Nintendo Switch platform. By the title of this video, you're likely already aware of the fact that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee have had their major soft locks fixed and are now in a playable state on this Switch emulator. A little bit later on in the video, I'm going to be going over absolutely every setting you need to apply in order to to get this game running and performing well both from a stability and from a frame rate standpoint but for now we're going to be going over everything that has changed and everything we have present in this brand new yuzu patreon preview now before we get started taking a look at all of the major changes in this new update if you yourself want to get access to this you can either choose to donate and support yuzu's development over on their patreon you will find a link for that down in this video's description or if you do not have the ability to donate to them due to the open source nature of Yuzu emulator I am able to share to you that build in a private message so if you're unable to support Yuzu right now all you have to do is join my discord and ask for this brand new Yuzu patreon build over there and either I or one of the other nice members of the server will share it to you in a private message now that all that mess is out of the way let's take a look at all of the major changes that are present in this new patreon build first of all we have a brand new thread scheduler which is more accurate and by far less error prone than the one we previously had in Yuzu. This brand new scheduler was made to fix issues like kernel crashes and softlocks that occur in many, many games. It is due to this new scheduler that Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu are now in a playable fashion, as well as tons of other games which we're going to be taking a look at in just a bit. Also present in this new Patreon preview is the first implementation of bindless textures, the TLDR version of what this is, it's basically a new type of texture which is going to allow brand new graphical effects to render in games where they previously weren't rendered before. Again, Pokemon Let's Go is a prime example of this, many of the Pokemon movesets now have correctly rendered graphics in battle scenes and also several new effects are also present in games like Bayonetta 2, Final Fantasy Fantasy Pocket Edition and Super Mario Odyssey. Also, not to get anyone too hyped, but bindless textures are also a large part of Super Smash Bros Ultimate, and while unfortunately Super Smash Bros Ultimate still isn't booting on Yuzu, when it does, according to some of the GPU developers over at Yuzu that I have been speaking to, it should look damn good once it does eventually boot. I just wanted to mention that little piece of information because there's bound to be a lot of people underneath this video asking about Super Smash Bros Ultimate, and unfortunately while it still isn't booting, it is being worked on damn hard by the developers of Yuzu. The final upgrade we have in this new Patreon preview are a host of GPU memory fixes and as with the bindless textures implementation these new memory fixes are also going to allow new effects to render in game and also bring a brand new level of stability to the emulator. Over the past I'd say seven to nine days both myself and many other members over on the Yuzu discord have been testing out some of these new pre patreon Patreon builds and I can honestly tell you guys that using this new version is literally like a night and a day difference for some games. Pokemon Let's Go is just one example but there are literally dozens upon dozens of games that were previously buggy crashing messes and are now very similarly to Pokemon almost fully playable. Let's now take a look at just a few of those games starting things off with Bayonetta 2. This is just one of the many titles that are now basically considered playable on a Yuzu emulator. We have extensively taken a look at these games before and previously while yes we did have many many performance optimizations which did indeed make the game very very playable thanks to all of these new softlock and kernel fixes Bayonetta 2 no longer randomly crashes. Now similarly to Simu emulator it does have some issues in relation to the synchronization of its cutscenes. You will notice from time to time in the gameplay footage here also that we are getting some of these little stuttery pauses. This isn't related to the emulator, well I guess it is related to the emulator but it's actually just shader cache compilation so you can ignore that 
that as as you build your shader cache those small stutters will quickly disappear. You will also notice that in a very funny fashion, also very similarly to Simu Emulator, the shadows, at least for Bayonetta and many of the enemy NPC characters in the game are also completely broken, only rendering this strange square on the ground. Now regardless of any of that, it's still pretty damn amazing that Bayonetta 2, or indeed any game is fully playable and rendered as well as this on an emulator that is as young as Yuzu. While Yuzu may seem like it's been around for a long time now, we all need to remember that this emulator itself is only just after passing one year old. Next up on our compatibility list for this new Patreon preview, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 thanks to all of the new scheduler changes and the new GPU memory fixes is now able to not only load into its initial title screen but is also able to go in game. Now performance levels once in game are pretty damn terrible, pretty much staying in and around 2, 3, 4 and 5 frames per second at the very best and also as you can very very clearly see the graphics are pretty distorted and everything isn't working properly at all. Now regardless of that it's still pretty damn impressive that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is showing any graphics at all and I have absolutely no doubt with future optimizations and and stability improvements, this game is eventually going to be in a much, much more playable state. Next up we have Sonic Forces and similarly to the previous games we've taken a look at, this game no longer softlocks in gameplay and as you can see by the gameplay being displayed on screen right now, it is not only looking but it is also performing much, much better than we've seen on Yuzu before. As with pretty much all of the games we've covered thus far, this game will run a lot better performance wise if you use asynchronous GPU emulation, but if you want the best possible stability in this game and many of the games we've covered so far, you would be better off to just leave that option disabled. In my testing with these new versions of Yuzu with the new scheduler and the new GPU memory fixes, only games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey are stable when using this asynchronous GPU emulation feature, so if in any of your games you're suffering with stability or crashing issues, please turn off this this asynchronous GPU emulation feature, you can find it in the Yuzu configure menu under the graphics tab. While this setting will boost your performance in games that do currently support it, many games are still running at very, very respectable performance levels even without it. One such example you can see in gameplay right now, this is Yokalele, and again, thanks to the new scheduler and new GPU fixes, this game has seen its crashes and soft locks completely fixed. While it doesn't run at exactly the most optimal performance levels and it does have quite a few graphical issues, this game, at least from a gameplay perspective, can now be considered playable. Okay, so as I promised at the start of the video guys, I am now going to show you absolutely everything you need and every single setting required in order to get Pokemon Let's Go running at the best possible performance and stability levels. To do this, let's quickly jump across to my desktop. Okay, so first and foremost, you're going to be requiring this latest version of Yuzu Emulator. This right here is the brand new Patreon preview, which was released on the 1st of April. You'll notice that you get this little pop-up asking you to support the emulator if you do not support them already. If you click this hot link right here, it will bring you to Yuzu's Patreon, so please do support them if you haven't done so. Next, you're obviously going to need your games. Once you have your game files, all you have to do is come to File and set your game Game directory, you need to make sure that any and all of your games you're going to be playing on Yuzu are in this directory. You're also going to require your keys and if you want a more in-depth guide on setting up Yuzu, you can also find that down in this video's description or simply ask over on my Discord. Once you have your games, you're also going to require a game save that is able to skip the intro sequence of the game. You'll find any and all of these game saves for either Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee down in this video's description. All you have to do is download them, extract them to a folder like so and you are going to be needing this save data.bin. So next all you have to do is right click the game, come to open save directory, select an account if it asks you to do so and once you do this it will open this directory right here which displays the 
title ID of your game. Next, all you have to do is drag and drop your save data dot bin into this folder which Yuzu Emulator opened, and that's pretty much it in relation to using any of these files. Next, there are a few settings we need to change in the emulator itself in order to get the game working for one and also running at the best possible levels for performance and stability. All you have to do is come to Emulation, Configure, and then in this graphics tab, as I've previously mentioned, you do not want to use this Use Asynchronous GPU Emulation option, as while it will give you better performance in game, it will also make your game much, much more prone to crashing. I would highly advise to also set your game speed to 75%, as doing this will make battles and catching Pokemon a lot easier. You should also come to your System Audio tab and enable this audio stretching option. Once you've done all this, that's pretty much all we have to do in relation to graphics. Next, we have to set up the proper control schemes as Pokemon Let's Go, even on the Nintendo Switch, only uses specific controllers. For me, what I like to do is I like to use custom in this drop down window, and then you're not going to be using this pro controller option right here. Instead, you want to disable use docked mode and enable Joy Cons docked. Once you've done this, you simply hit this configure button on the right hand side, and then all you have to do is set up any and all of these mappings to your own specific controller or keyboard. If you're confused in any way as to the layout of a Nintendo Switch controller or the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, pretty much all you're going to have to do is just Google an image of the Pro Controller or Joy-Cons and map the inputs on your controller to these specific buttons. Once you've done this, simply click OK through all of these different menus, it will close these specific fields, and we are now basically done and ready to boot either of these Pokemon Let's Go games. As you can see here, since I have enabled Shader Cache in my graphics tab, I am loading my own shader cache which I have built for this game. You will build yours naturally as you play your game and see all of the different movements and effects in games, so do not be worried, you will be able to naturally build one of these yourself. If you don't have a shader cache, it will simply bring you to this screen, at which point all you need to do is press A on your Switch controller, or if it's a PlayStation pad, it's Circle, and it is B on an Xbox One pad, I believe, and as you can very clearly see, we are now booted into the title menu of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Again, all you have to do is follow the on-screen prompts, and since I actually have my own save, you can see I'm able to continue my adventure. And once loaded into gameplay, you can see my performance level in the bottom right-hand corner of the window. Now, do be aware that the game is now playable, but it still does have several graphical issues. For example, right here in this cut sequence, you can see it has this weird depth issue. Another thing I would definitely, definitely like to point out is that, again, while the soft locks are fixed and it does really crash like it used to, I would still 100% highly advise for you to save your game as much as possible, since I myself made the mistake of playing the game for about 4 or 5 hours, and in all of that time I didn't get any of the soft locks that we previously did, and I kind of lost track of the fact that I was playing it in an experimental emulator, and eventually my game crashed due to a RAM overuse or RAM related issue. Since I hadn't saved my game, I pretty much lost all of that 4 or 5 hours and had to redo it again, so uh, yeah, please make sure to save your game as frequently as you possibly can. So there you go guys, you now know all of the steps related to getting a Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee running in the best possible fashion on this Switch emulator. Again, if you're having any trouble whatsoever getting anything Yuzu related set up, do not hesitate to jump over into the BSOD Gaming official Discord and ask any questions you could possibly have over there. Remember that no question at all is a dumb question since any and all of us were complete noobs to all of this at one stage also. If any of you guys have any questions in relation to game compatibility on this new Patreon build, do not be afraid to also ask either down in the comment or over on the Discord. But for now, that's going to be the end of this video. Once again guys, cheers for checking it out, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.